What's going on YouTube? This is SB3 Gaming and I am back with another MXGP video. Now I did want to go in here. Um, it's been about a week since I uploaded my last video. I was going to try to keep it minimal so that way you guys see videos and you know that there's some kind of an update. Um, and it's been about a week since Milestone has done their last update. With Christmas and everything, I, I kind of get it. Um, also, if you guys celebrate Christmas on this channel, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, if you celebrate another holiday, happy holidays. Um, but I wanted to do a pretty quick video just to make sure that um, you guys are kind of in the loop. Again, it's not there's not a new update, so I figured I'd just go in and play some of the games, do time attack for a little bit, um, just so you guys could see some more of the progression as I've played more of the game. Um, according to Steam, I've played about 30 hours, and that's not true, but um, I've got a solid couple hours in the game, so it should be a, a fair representation of how the game is being played now versus my first initial uh, gameplay of it. So I'm going to do just the time attack. Um, I don't like the, f the advanced physics. I may try it as I get a little bit further into the game. Um, but right away it's going to be manual. Reset, rewinds off, weather conditions will be clear. Um, if you guys have played this game at all, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the the rain physics in this game because I think they're I hate it. I mean it's it's good, but I, in previous milestone games I was able to play um, the rain tracks and I was just able to to blow away the um, the AI. And then in this one, the AI at least to me seem a lot harder. Um, that might just be <laughs> my lack of competition in the game, but it it, it seems harder. So I'm playing as uh, Romain Fevre, and I might go through some of the stuff too, just so you guys can see the different guys that they've got in the in the game, just so you guys have that idea of what's going on. Um, I've noticed a lot of videos have done that, and I haven't really gone through and done that, so that might be something I look at doing just to to show you guys what the full game looks like as they release it, um, go through the tracks and stuff like that, but. As I've gotten used to the physics, I, I'm starting to like it a little bit more and more. Um, right here, so they don't have they don't have ruts, which sucks. But they at least are giving some different line options, and it's it's not a perfect solution by any means. But it's at least something to to give you varying line choice throughout the track that actually kind of grabs you versus. In previous X, you know, MXGP 2019, there was nothing. It was just flat surface. This at least. You can rail the outside corner, which I haven't got quite nailed down yet in my playthrough. I usually take the inside ruts because it's easier to hook into these and get at least a little bit of momentum moving forward. Um, and then trying to, to do the outside ruts, I'm not. I get some of them, but some of the other ones I don't do as as well. I, <laughs> I hit the the berm a little too hard, and I end up going over the berm. So. That's something I'll have to... I can't hit it with speed like I could in the previous game. Still that wall issue, which I'm pretty sure the people at Milestone are on holiday. And with... I think I saw on the news the other day that they had some rising cases in... With COVID, so I, I don't know if they're going to be going into another lockdown or what's going to happen. But um, realistically, I'm not expecting this game to get too much maybe a couple of updates but I'm not expecting them to get too much in the way of content after launch just because they released this game on December 16th and the game has been out for almost what 10 days now and they've done one update which again it falls on Christmas so I understand I get it that they're not going to be as focused on the game whenever they should be spending time with their family but they've done one update and we're going to be going into January so they're going to start shifting their focus, I would imagine, to, to the Supercross game, which I think they've put a lot more time into, if I'm being honest. But I don't know. Maybe we'll see some some more updates. I hope they get some of this stuff figured out so that way the game's at least enjoyable until the next MXGP comes out next year. But with their licensing agreement with the FIM, I would imagine, or MXGP, um, they have to release a game yearly, which isn't always a... You know, it's cool to get a new game every year, but whenever they're making these small improvements, it feels a lot like a Madden game, um, but not as in-depth as a Madden game, obviously, but it, it feels like 
they're making small improvements to every game and it's it might end up being one of those games for me that I purchase once every two three four years like I do Madden to really see a noticeable difference in the gameplay um, me being a motocross and supercross junkie that's probably not gonna ever happen so I'm just happy that we're getting these games but more about the gameplay there's some canned whips um, I've said this in previous videos but it still feels like a heavier version of supercross 3 for me and that's not necessarily a bad thing with this game it feels more grounded it's not it doesn't feel as floaty in the air for me the some of the ground physics are a little weird with the cornering but that's that's an issue I've addressed before and I want to try to keep the videos at least a little bit different um, I will say out of all the MXGP games non modded so the stock versions of these first person cameras that they've got in these games um, this is my favorite it's still a little wonky but I like it a lot more than I like the Supercross ones or any of the previous MXGP ones um, this is the only first person camera that I enjoy um, I still like the MX versus ATV all out one better just because there's the the customization that you can do with it but this is probably the next best one in terms of like the arcadey first person modes like MX versus ATV and the MXGP games and the Supercross games. I'm not comparing this to like MX Bikes. I'm not comparing it to uh, MX Simulator either. So this is in terms of more of like the arcadey style games. Um, but yeah, I mean the first person, I don't think there's a system for tear offs yet. I haven't seen one at least. No, there's not. Um, so they're either auto or they just don't do it, which I think is a bummer because I like having that ability to do it even if it is more aesthetic than anything. I, I've never used this camera. I don't know people... I think people like this far away camera. I don't personally like it myself. It makes it feel too... It makes it feel more arcadey than what it already is because it feels smaller and like I'm, I don't know, not my favorite. Um, let me switch to, can I switch it to rain? No. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. I'm going to start the time attack. I'm going to do the exact same track in, so I did a 2.15.6.7 was my, 6.6.7 was my fastest lap time. And I was just jacking around, but let's uh let's go into do the same track we'll do it in the rain so you guys can compare it so that way you guys can see the comparison on the lap times because to me i go a lot slower in the rain and i don't know if that's just the way that i ride if i don't i i don't know i still think they need to fix some of the issues with the the rain because in the career mode on the on the rain that i played or on the the tracks that i played the 17 round series that they had it was raining probably a solid 50% of those races. I'm talking about individual motos. So out of the 17 races, the two motos that took place on each of those races, um, they they it rained probably half of the half of the motos that I did. Um, I'll do standard physics. I'll keep everything the same minus the rain, so that way it's a true comparison. I don't like the rain in this game. It's I don't know. I don't know what it is about it, but the rain it gets on the the screen, and without having a tear off system, it just I, I I don't know I don't like it. And unless there's something I'm missing, um, I haven't looked for a solution to this, but to me the raindrops on the screen in third person it annoys the crap out of me. It's a cool feature, but in a racing situation in these games it makes it really really hard because like to my left right here I can't really. It, it gets all blurred out because there's raindrops right there. And, you know, in most situations, that's not a bad thing. But it's it's just a, an aesthetic thing that it, it makes it hard. Like, if I'm trying to go for a pass for something, it, it throws me off, if that makes sense. Uh, because I'm focused on the rider. I'm focused on whatever whatever's going on. And then I see that raindrop, and it, just, it throws me off. So it's probably more just my my thing versus the actual the game it's a cool feature when you're riding around and it doesn't make that big of a deal but it's i don't know 
it's just a weird thing that I've noticed with the game, and it's kind of obnoxious to me because you'll get the like little mud particles, and they they take a long time to go away. And I don't know if that's supposed to be them trying to mimic you, your field of vision during a race. But um, without having a tear off option, there, there's not really a way to fix it, and you're just stuck looking at little rain droplets that are potentially in the way of of what you're trying to do. So like up in the to my top right, right above my shoulder, there's that big rain droplet. And it's it's not that big of a deal, but whenever, you know, I, like the way I race these games, I'm focusing on the rider that's in front of me, and if that rider is in that blop, it, I don't I don't know. It just weirds me out. Um which I mean wouldn't be necessarily as big of a big deal to me if half the races in my career mode were were rain races. So that's just a little grievance on my part. Um, I know Milestone's working on getting stuff fixed with it being the holidays. I imagine it's going to take a little bit longer, but that's just the grievance I have with the rain mode. Uh, so my lap time was a 2.15.667. I've run a, all things considered, I've run a pretty clean lap. And I am in no way saying, like, I'm probably one of the slowest riders in this game, too. <laughs> comparatively so oh, come on but it does seem like the track slows down a little bit and in the rain which in previous mxgp games my lap times weren't really that different in the rain versus in the when the track was dry um which i don't think i think it should be at least a, a considerable amount slower in the rain but that's just me If you guys have had the same, if you guys have played MXGP and you've played the career mode, let me know if you've had like the, a good chunk of your races be rain races. Um, whether it be like the entire week, like the if you did the double races, if it was the entire weekend that was rainy or if a specific moto. Most of my, my rain races, if it wasn't the entire weekend, it was always moto two. I think out of the entire, what is it, 17 races, 17 weekends of the, the first and second moto. What is that, 34? 34? Yeah, 34. <laughs> Math's hard. Um, but out of the 34 motos I did, if it was a moto, I'd say moto one, I think I had like one rain race. I think that it was just by itself. And then the second one was clear. But the second moto, if it was clear in the first moto, it, was, it seemed like it always rained in the second moto. It was weird. Which I'm all for random weather and having to adjust your plan, but whenever it's happening every single, almost every single weekend, whenever you're racing these these weekend races, it's just, it's ridiculous. And I get it. I mean, I'm going to go through, I'm going to play career game, I'm going to play championship, and I'm going to see what's going on to see if it was more of like a career mode thing or if it was more of a, a randomized thing and just to see if it happens again and again. Ah, blew my lap. Dang it. Okay, so I'll do one more lap after this, and I'll, I'll stay quiet so you guys can hear the sounds of the the Kawasaki just to see if you can hear any difference from the Honda, the CRF450 that I was riding. Um, let me know what you guys think of the the bike sounds. To me, I'm not, I'm not that into it. Like, they sound okay. It sounds good enough for me. Like, I'm not as into the sounds as I am into the the graphics and the physics, but all right. So I, when I get to this turn, I'm going to mute my mic so you guys can hear um, a full two minutes of just bike sounds.
right, so last thing I'm going to do in this time attack is I'm going to go try to hit a big jump so you can see what the... And go into photo mode. Whoa! So you can see in photo mode what the whips actually look like. Um, it's kind of a, a moot point because they're canned whips and you're only going to see it from the back, but some people might care. So I, that's the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a big jump and I'm going to throw a sick whip, dude. And then I'm going to be done with uh, this. And then I'm going to go in... Um, I've had some people ask me about how to do the money mod, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you guys how to do that pretty quick. And then, yeah, hopefully Milestone puts out another update. So if they put out an update tomorrow, oh, wait, 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 ah, oh, dang it, oh, I threw it away, ow. Oh. Dang it, I'm so upset with myself. I also have a bad habit in this game of going to hit the inside rut. I'm going to call it the inside berm, not the inside rut because it's not really a rut. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't look bad. I, I get that you want to have the, the free whips. I get that. But, I mean, in terms of having just, like, a canned whip, that doesn't look that bad. I mean, it does a pretty good job. I mean, in terms of canned whips, and it probably helps them that they can do it that way, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, I Obviously, I would rather it be a free whip where I can actually go through and do it. Um, so those are comparison. My fastest lap time was a uh, on a dry track was a 215.66. I did that in two laps. Um, I did run an additional lap here in the rain. Again, part of it I was screwing around, but my best lap was a 221.417. So um, almost six seconds a lap slower than what it was on a dry track. Now, I'm sure if I went through and I did 10 laps on each, I could probably get pretty similar times, but uh, just for the sake of comparison, it appears that you do run slower lap times whenever you're going on um, on a wet track or a raining track versus a dry prime track. Um, yeah, uh, so what I'll do really quick, too, before I go into the money mod is just kind of go through and show you guys some of the, the at least the MXGP riders. If you want to see the MX2 riders, I can go through and do that, but... Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys the riders just so you can see who's all in the game because I've had people um, wondering who all was in here. So so I'll start off with Romain Febra. Uh, he is riding his Monster Energy Kawasaki and he's wearing his new Alpine Stars gear and he's running the number three, which last year he was running the number 461. Uh, he's got Showa suspension, Dunlop tires, and then I think he runs Pro Circuit on the exhaust. Uh, you got Jeremy Sewer. He's again in Alpine Stars. He's on Monster Energy Yamaha. Um, running the number 91. I think he was on he was on Monster Energy Yamaha last year too. Uh, and then you got Arminus Jessiconis, the number 27. He's on Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. Um, I know he had a really big crash last during this last MXGP season. I don't know if he's okay. I think there was talks early if he didn't have any feeling in his in his legs um, I haven't followed up on what's going on there so I can definitely check into that just to kind of do some um, follow up on that uh, Paul's Jonas the number 41 he's on Rockstar Energy Husqvarna in this game and if I remember correctly he actually is on the the factory the standing construct gas gas machine for next season uh, Glenn Koldenhoff uh, he recently announced that he was going to Monster Energy Yamaha but he, here he's on the standing construct uh, gas gas Jorge Prado, number 61. They have him in the MXGP glass on the Red Bull KTM. Uh, Ivo Monticelli, he's the other rider on the on the uh, standing construct gas gas. Jeremy Van Horbeek, number 89. He was on the factory HRC Honda last year, and I guess he's on, I don't know if this is a separate team or if they just moved over to have Mitch Evans on there. Uh, Evan G... Bubrashev, I pronounced his first name wrong. I apologize. 
Um, he's on the Husqvarna, which, to my knowledge, he was always a, he always rode the uh, Honda, and then I think he was on Kawasaki for a couple years. But he's on Husqvarna this year. Um, I don't know what bike he's going to be on next year, but it's, I mean everything looks pretty cool. I don't follow the MXGP series super closely, so um, if there are any issues with the gear or the bike or anything like that, let me know down in the comments so I can I can make a comparison video so you guys can actually see what's going on. Uh, you got Mitch Evans. He's uh, the number 43 HRC Honda. If you do, there's a specific mod out there too with, uh, I think it's Leone291, that if you want to have Ken Roxon in the game, you can go to hit through his YouTube channel and you can download the mod and it takes over uh, Mitchell Evans and it pulls up, it gives him the Fox gear, the number 94, all that cool stuff. Um, so that's an option with the modding. Um, I haven't seen anything else with Paved 2021. Again, with the holidays around, it didn't. I, I didn't expect to see too much right off the bat. Uh, you got Alessandro Lupino. He's on the, the Gebin Van Van Roy Yamaha Racing Team. Uh, number 77. I believe he was on a Kawasaki this or the previous year, or like the year before 2020, so 2019. Uh, you got Benoit Patrell, number six on that Honda. Got Kevin Stribos on a Suzuki. I didn't think he raced this 2020. I didn't think Suzuki had any bikes in there. So, again, I didn't follow it too closely. But I don't remember seeing Kevin Stribos in the on in the track on the uh, during the season of 2020. But I could be wrong. Uh, Thomas Covington, number 64. He's on the the other rider on the Gavin Van 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 Roy Yamaha Racing Team. Uh, Anton Gol Cole Gol, the G. It looks like a G. It's not a C. Um, he's on the what is that? The 287. He's on the JWR Racing. I believe that's a Honda. Uh, Sean Simpson is on his own team. He's the SS24 KTM, and he's riding FXR gear. Calvin Valandrin, uh, another rider on the Gevin Van Van Roy Yamaha Racing Team. Tenel Leoc on the A1M. Husqvarna, Jose Butron, 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 I don't know, uh, number 17 on the JD Gunnick, Gunnick's KTM Racing Team, uh, Peter Petrov, Team VRT, Nord Pesca Holland, which is a KTM team, Jordi Tixier, boy, he has fallen off, what happened to him, I remember, I think he won the MX2 Championship a couple years back, and then since he's been up in the MXGP team. I just haven't heard really anything with him, so hopefully he's able to turn it around. Uh, Henry Jacobi's on Yamaha SM Action, MC Miglory. Uh, he's on the number 29. Adam Sterry is the Hitachi KTM fueled by Milwaukee. He's number 811. Iker <laughs> Laraganga Olana, Olano is an MGR motocross team. It's a KTM. Uh, Valentin Guillo. Honda SR Moto Blouse. We got Michel uh, Cervellin. He's on the C SDM course Yamaha on the number 7747. Uh, Tom Koch is KTM Sarholes Racing Team. Arna Tonus. Dang, why is he all the way down to the bottom? Dang, okay. Uh, Arna Tonus, he's on the Monster Energy Factory Yamaha. Uh, he's on the team with Gautier Paulin. Did I not say him? Oh, shoot. I missed a couple riders. Hold on. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go back up to the top. I thought it went all the way through. Uh, missed the big riders. So, um, Jeffrey Hurley's <laughs> on the Red Bull KTM Factory Racing. Um, Antonio Cairoli on the 222. Again, Red Bull Factory. K He's actually set – him and uh, Jorge Prado, I didn't know this until earlier this year, but they're, him and Jeffrey Hurley's are technically on separate teams. Um, I think Antonio Cairoli's on its – it breaks down a little bit different since so like to Carly, I think, and it, that just blew my mind because I heard that the Red Bull KTM guys they signed to or him and Cairoli and uh, Prado both signed to to Thor and City and all that stuff with the with the gear, and then Jeffrey Hurley came out in Alpine Stars, and I was like, what the heck? I thought they signed with Thor. And I guess Jeffrey Hurlings and uh, Tom Vial in the MX2 class, they run technically separate different – they're technically different teams. So I didn't know that. But I, you got the number 25 of Clement DeSalle. Um, he retired at the end of this season. So they'll have 
one additional spot with um, next to Romain Fevre. I don't know. I haven't looked into the MXGP silly season, so we'll have to see what's going on there. Who fills that second spot? I uh, got the now two back-to-back -back four time defending champion uh, Tim Geiser on the HRC Honda 243. Got Brian Bogers on the Marchetti Racing Team KTM, the number 189, right? Yeah. And you got Gautier Paulin. He's the second rider this season that um, with Clement de Salle that uh, he retired. They retired at the end of the season. I think Clement's was, was planned a little bit. Like, it was obviously in the middle of the season, but I think Gautier Paulin announced his retirement at the end of the season, too. Uh, but he's the other rider on the MXGP uh, Monster Energy Yamaha team. If you guys would like me to, I can go through the MX2 class. I'm not going to do it today, but if you guys would like me to, I can. Uh, just let me know down in the comments that I can go through and look at that. But last thing I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to show you how to install the money mod. So that way you guys can see how it works, what it does. Um, so if you guys have seen right here so if you look at my account the price it's what is that 20,000 credits and you see my account I've got I think it's a little under a billion credits so the way that you do that is let me see so you have to download this thing called the cheat engine and the way you do that is you just I googled cheat engine and I downloaded it what you'll do from here is you'll go through you'll select your game so obviously you want MXGP6 you'll click open load the associate table mxgp6-164 shipping.ct you click yes and then what you'll do here um, i haven't messed around with it enough to to see if i can change certain other things i only, i specifically use it for um adding money so that way i don't have to grind through and from what i've heard the grind to get money in this game is god awful so if you're on pc look into getting this so that way you guys can stop the grind and actually play the <laughs> the game you want to play but basically what you'll do is you'll copy this number down so it's uh nine nine eight zero seven eight zero nine nine and for you guys whatever whatever number you have if it's a thousand you would put a thousand so you, whatever this number is in your account balance you put that in the right here where it says hex you don't check anything but you put that number in there. So I'll do it again just so you guys can see it. So my number right here, so I put 998078099. That's the, the amount that you're looking for. And then you hit first scan. So because I've done this before, it's probably not doing it, but you'll usually have a bunch of different numbers and you have to narrow that down. So what you'll do is you'll go back into the game, you'll purchase something. I usually buy um, gear or something cheap, especially starting out. So let's say you went in here. Goggles, I think, are the cheapest thing. But you want to go in and you'll purchase goggles. Oh, oh, excuse me. You'll purchase goggles or something you haven't purchased. And let's see if any goggles I haven't bought. I think I bought all the goggles. But the, you'll buy the goggles. Let's say you buy them and you go, duh, 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 boom. Okay, I got them. They were $1,000. And I now have 1,000 credits left over. You'll exit this number out. You'll put the new number in. You'll hit next scan. From there, you should have, you should get it down to where it's narrowed down to one. So you'll click, you'll double click this, and you'll adjust it to 999, 999, 999. And then you hit OK. And you go back into the game. And what I had to do to get this to work is I had to go back out. And then I went back into some different thing. And you should see right here. It went back up to basically a billion. But again, so what you'll do with that, just to make sure you're doing it correctly, is you'll hit first scan after you put the initial number that's in there, whatever that number is. Um, I think when I started out, mine was like 5,000. I went in and bought a pair of um, a pair of uh, goggles. It went down to like whatever it was, let's say 1,000. Go back into the thing, into the cheat engine. You put 1,000, you hit next scan. And then whatever that number is, it should get down to one. You click it, double click that value, and then you adjust it to whatever you need it to be. Um, if you guys would like me to do a more in-depth, I can scrap this my, my save file just so you guys can see how it's actually done. 
Um, I don't know if this part has anything to do with anything. I always click yes just so it saves it. But that's how you do the cheat engine mod. Uh, so if you're looking to get um, unlimited money essentially, then that's what you do to, to get it done. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I got for this video in lieu of uh, MXGP not having an update for Christmas or Milestone not pushing one out. Um, if you guys would like to see any other mods on how to do specific mods um, or how to install mods, what to do, things like that, let me know down in the comments and I'll definitely get one published so you guys can have a visual aid. Um, I know when I first started doing these videos, I was very confused on how to do it. And after doing it for a couple of times, you start to understand how it's supposed to work, what you're supposed to do and stuff like that. Uh, so if you guys want to see a step-by-step -step video on, on how to install specific mods, let me know down in the comments and I'll get it taken care of for you. Um, other than that, I'm going to be on the lookout for more updates from MXGP. Um, if I get access to anything, whether it be a, a Supercross 4 build from Milestone, I've asked them about it. Um, I haven't gotten any word back on whether or not I'm going to or not. But if I do, I'll, I'll make sure to get something posted up as quick as I can. Other than that, I'll be on the lookout for MXGP to have an update. As soon as it gets one, I'll release a video, go through what it has, what it doesn't have, um, and stuff like that. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the, the support that I've gotten on the last couple videos. Um, if you guys are in any of the discords and clicking on that, thank you guys so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to start thinking of some stuff to do as I hit start hitting uh, viewing milestones and stuff like that. Just so that way I can get more engaged and start giving back to the community. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout for the next video. Um, if you're watching this on Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, Happy Holidays to whatever it is that you celebrate. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.